What's going on guys? Welcome back. Today we are doing the second part of OWASP API Security Top 10. And in today's video we're going to carry out task 2 and task 3. Task 2 is, ver is, is mass management, a mass assignment, and task 3 is security misconfiguration. I just wanted to re I want to remind you guys that all of what we are doing now, in addition to the previous room, which was the first part, all of that is part of the OWASP Top 10 vulnerabilities but in these videos we are talking about the api security how to mitigate them from the perspective of the api um okay so let's start with the mass assignment and we open the machine turn on the uh, the machine and i'm gonna take now the url to the endpoint you guys you know the drill right uh, we're going to take the url okay user so what's happening here so first we have to switch to post request and we have to assign a couple parameters here let's see what they are your name username password credit so what's what's going on here is this page is responsible for updating user information it is similar to the edit profile page you see in social media sites so where you have the chance to edit your email username change your password change your name um, do whatever you want it's similar to these pages so this is the api endpoint responsible for this and let's now add the parameters so we have name username password credit name user name password and credit okay so the name is bob username bob underscore mht leave the password at the end the credit is 110 and now the password let's see if there is a way to copy the password it's not provided so we're gonna have to type that manually unfortunately so pound character ge and then we have asterisk by a at 35 and u6 it's not that difficult so let's put it aside okay let's send the request okay let's take a look as you can see here, this is the body of the response. And we got the changes we requested. So the name is now Bob. The username is now Bob underscore MHT. The credit now has changed to 110. And the user ID is 5. If you take a look at the request headers on the left. Let's see here. So as you can see, we don't have any authorization header here. So it's not included in the request request headers okay so what happened here again we just requested to update the user information whose id equal to five to this information so we call this mass assignment or mass update so the problem here is that um, it's the credit column so the credit represents some kind of um, privilege level on the website if you if the credit is 110 it means the user bob can do specific actions if the credit is less than 110 say it's 50 uh, then the then bob or the amount of actions bob can do are actually lower than the number of actions bob can do when it is 110 so the level of privilege increases when the credit number is higher than 50 that's what is mentioned here as you can see default value is 50 so much like when we talked about broken authorization okay when we said that in the request headers we don't pass information unencoded or unencrypted because users can change the request headers and elevate their privileges it's the same here in the body so if we put this for example 200 and send as you can see it's now 200 
So it seems like we can do whatever we want with the credit. And it's actually it actually makes sense from the perspective of updating your information. So if you are on a profile info, your profile information page and you just want to update anything, right? You have to, you should be able to do that, right? Your name, username, the password, uh, description of your profile, the photo, the about, all of this information should be updated. But in this scenario, the credit here represents something or represents specific actions that Bob can do and cannot do. So the problem here is that the credit uh, field here is not checked by the server. So whatever we update here gets passed immediately to and executed in the server side. It is similar to SQL injection. So in SQL injection, you pass your query through the URL and your query immediately gets executed in the database. So what's supposed to happen is you pass on your query. The query should be first checked by the web application for any uh, blacklisted characters and then executed. The same here. All the information we pass on, even on the update profile page, should also be checked one by one before, ex before getting executed on the page. If you go now to facebook.com and try to upload, um, instead of a picture, you try to upload a zip file. So it's not it's not gonna accept it, right? So there is there are filters behind checking the information of the inputs you are passing to the server. The same here. So let's scroll down and let's take a look at this endpoint underscore s and send. Take a look at the output. So the name got changed, user name changed. But the credit is 50. So although we passed 200, but again, the credit didn't change. Why though? This API endpoint checks the information the user passes to the web application. So what happened, it checked for the username, the password, and it assigned the appropriate level of privileges. So after assigning the appropriate level of privileges, the privileges, we assigned 200, but it didn't accept it because the default value for the credit should be 50 for the users who are on the same privilege of pop. That's what we mean by checking the input. So that's the first one. Is it good practice to blindly insert, update user provided data in the database? Of course not. Using API rule six, under user underscore x s insert a record in the database using the credit value as 1000 what would be the return credit value after performing question two well we did the same but we used 200 and as you can see the credit return is 50. so that's for this task let me show you guys something so what i'm doing here i'm working on a note file it is named secure coding principles so in this file, I'm not finished it, it's, under, it's in progress. I'm going guys to make it a comprehensive guide for secure coding from the perspective of OWASP top 10. So if we go now to OWASP top 10, then, and here, as you can see, we have the top 10 classifications. But if we go to OWASP top 10 secure coding checklist, let's see where is the page. Yeah, this is the page. So this is a checklist, as you can see, a checklist of secure coding for web applications. So what I'm going to do, guys, as you can see here, I'm classifying the secure coding principles according to the uh, checklist in here. So as if, for example, access control, we have authorization tokens, the concept, and what the vulnerabilities they prevent. Authentication and password management. So for every single aspect of this checklist or of OWASP top 10, I'm going to put the appropriate practices 
for secret coding. This file is not finished yet. I'm not going to publish this file yet, but it is part of the channel membership tier too if you are interested. So let's go back to here. So this task is finished. Next task, security misconfiguration. Okay, let's take the URL and proceed. Okay, so in here we've switched the request to get and no headers are required. Okay, let's ping. Okay, so as you can see, this is the output and the output seems to be an error. Look at the output, it looks like a stack trace and it, it's revealing so much information about the web server like the path so it is ZAMP server right and it's using as you can see Laravel framework and these are the file paths so what are we talking about here so this is called this is called security misconfiguration or a problem in error handling so error handling is actually a thing in OWASP top 10 and it's actually representing a case where if we send a request to the web server okay and if there is an error handling the request it is actually displaying the error information so in the ideal scenario the web server should not display the error information back to the user which is us because all of this information as you can see, reveals um, sensitive details about the configuration of the web server. This information can be used to scan and re perform reconnaissance on the server. So we call this security misconfiguration. So the, the ideal scenario here is to disable the errors being displayed back to the user so that not to reveal this information. So if you go now to an, an appropriate scenario here, API rule underscore s, which is the secure version of this API. And we click on send. As you can see, all of these information now disappeared and we got this. So it means there is an error message, never server error, malfunction as their ID, please contact administrator. That's it. That's enough. So this way we successfully handled the errors and we properly configured the server not to display any information back when there is an error. That's the ideal scenario. So the questions, is an excellent approach to show error logs from the stack trace to the operators? We already said no. Try to use the API call, API rule 7 under ping underscore s. Okay. What's the hey HTTP response code? It is 500 because there is an internal server error. What's the error ID number? It is this. So as, as you can see guys, answering the questions of this task is no brainer. But the actually the, th the thing is, it, the, the, the idea is in the concept laid down in the task. It's very important to understand these things if you are a developer. So that was it guys. In the next video, we're going to carry out the, the next of the tasks and we wrap this up. So that was it. I will see you in the next video.